Hey guys, in this video, we're going to kind of continue our Chasm Workspaces uh, video series, and we're gonna take a look at three specific topics. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is something called rolling images. Basically, you can think of that as nightly updates to the containers that are available in your workspaces setup. The second thing we're gonna take a look at is something called persistent storage that will allow us to say, set up a desktop environment in one of our workspaces and then close out that desktop environment, but still be able to go back to it later and kind of pick up where we left off. The third area that we're gonna cover in this video is session timeout. Now by default, uh, the sessions aren't very long, so I wanna show you how you can change that to, to make your sessions just last as long as you'd like them to last. But before we get into all of that, of course, I've got some bills to pay. So here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. I've been partnered with Linode for quite a while now because it's a great place to host just about anything you could want to host. Need a dedicated space to host an app? Linode has you covered with more than 100 pre-built apps that can be installed with just a couple of clicks. Want to develop an app on your favorite flavor of Linux? Linode has you covered there too, with more than 30 different options to start with. Need to do some pen testing on your own network or app? Install a Kali Linux setup in just a few clicks to get started with testing your own security. You can also host a Docker setup, a Kubernetes cluster, and more with just a few clicks. From hosting a single website to complex multi-cloud deployments, find enterprise level capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than the major cloud providers. Be sure to check out the link in the video description to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to see what you can do with Linode. But with that said, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at rolling images and so I can show you how you can fix a problem that you may have already encountered. Okay, so here we are, we're logged into the admin area of Chasm and I wanna demonstrate something first before I show you how to switch to rolling images. So if we come over to our workspaces tab up here at the top and then come over and uh, click on, let's say Discord. Uh, we're gonna leave this in our, well, let's, it doesn't matter. We're just open this however you'd like to open it. But when I click this, it's going to load our Discord instance. So once it finally loads, we're gonna see that there's this, this, this message up here that says, hey, today must be your lucky day. There's an update available. And it, it, it doesn't matter which of these you click, nothing fixes it. So that kind of makes, in this case, Discord completely unusable. So let me show you how you can fix this issue. First thing I wanna do is come back over here and go back to my desktop. I'm just gonna delete this session, doesn't matter. So we're gonna go back to admin and then we wanna come over here to where it says workspaces. We're gonna click there and we're going to, we're just gonna open this up and scroll down to Discord. And right here we can see Discord is running as a container, it's enabled. And right here is the, uh, the, the Docker image that we're using currently for our Chasm workspaces setup. So it seems like this should be fine. However, Discord releases updates all of the time and this particular version may be outdated. And in fact, we know it's outdated because we couldn't even log into our, our account. So here's what we can do. We're gonna come over to the far right. We're going to click on edit and while we're here, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Like you can change the name. So if you wanted to be clever, you could, you know, you could change your friendly name, what it shows up as on your dashboard. You can change the description. You can change the thumbnail. You can modify and customize this basically however you want to fit your aesthetic or, or your, your workflow, whatever. You can modify a lot of this stuff. And that's actually kind of what we're gonna do here. If we come down, we can see that our Docker image, Chasm Web slash Discord, uh, and then version 1.12.0. Now we know that that doesn't work. Uh, as, as we saw a moment ago. So what we're gonna do is head over here to uh, hub.docker.com slash r slash chasm web slash discord. And if we scroll down uh, a little bit, here we can see current tags, uh, 1.12.0, that's the one we're on. However, we can see right here is 1.12.0 dash rolling. And it says rolling tags are images that are updated and built nightly to ensure your images are running the latest version. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top I just wanna make sure I don't screw this up, but I'm just gonna grab that right there and copy it and press Control C on my keyboard. And we're just gonna swap out like that. And then uh, we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom and click Submit. And then we can come back to our workspaces. And let's see. Oops, so right here it says no resources are available. And that's because it is downloading the newest version, that rolling version of Discord. So what we need to do is just kind of hang out, give it a minute to run its update, and then we'll come back and take a look. 
a few moments later. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later and we're gonna come back over to our dashboard and click on our Discord button or tab or whatever you wanna call it there and click launch session. And this time it actually seems to be loading. So that's a good, and here we go. It ran some updates, it's starting. Give this just a second. And just like that, now we're able to get logged in. Uh, we're gonna give this a second. I'm just gonna log in to my account so you can actually see it working. So of course I'm gonna use the QR code scanner option on my phone. I'm gonna say, yes, I'm trying to log in there. So here we are, we're using Discord now, it's actually up and running. And all we had to do was change our Docker image inside Chasm to be the rolling version to make sure that it's continuously updating anytime there's a new update available to the container. So something I wanted to kind of add to that is you can append all of the different images or workspaces that are in here with that dash rolling to make sure that you've always got the most current version of the container that's available. Um, however, you may run into issues with that and you may not want to do that with certain containers. Uh, I think that's depending on your, your needs, your setup, your workflow, you may wanna play with that dash rolling on the, uh, on the tag for the container you're trying to use just to see what the best option is for your particular setup. So now that we've taken a look at rolling images, let's take a look at persistent storage. Uh, and first let me demonstrate kind of uh, what we're currently working with. So if we come over uh, to our, our workspaces dashboard here, I'm gonna open up Ubuntu Focal. Just gonna click that. I'm gonna let it open in a, in a current session or a current tab, that's fine. Um, and then I think what I wanna do is just open up Firefox. I'm gonna type in cat pictures and um, yeah, I think, um, sure, let's let's grab this guy right here. We're gonna right click, we're gonna say, um, save image as, we're gonna put it in pictures. That seems like a reasonable expectation. Uh, click save. Cool, so now I'm gonna close my, my Firefox uh, browser window here inside. Oops, let's delete that. And then what I wanna do is come over here to uh, downloads, we'll come over to Chasm user, we'll go to pictures, and hey, look, there's the picture of the cat we just downloaded. I can open that up um, like so. We'll give this a second. There we go. And there's the picture that we downloaded. So we know that that is there. Now, of course, if I close all of this and I come over and uh, I delete my session and delete my session, right? And then open this back up and say launch session. That's fine. Give this a second again. And of course, uh, we'll close that. We'll go to our downloads. I can double click. Chasm user uh, pictures, not there. So that just tells us once our once we've deleted our session, that's gone. All of the data with it is gone. So let me show you how you can have a persistent setup so that you can download pictures and files and configure your dash your your desktop however you'd like to configure it. And and even if you delete your session, come back to it later. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this. We're going to uh, we're going to delete our session here and click delete. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll come back over to admin. We'll go to workspaces down here on the left side. And then we're going to do, uh, we're gonna scroll down. There's a specific one I'm looking for. It's this one, that's the Ubuntu Focal that we were just working with. This is the one that's enabled. Um, and of course, uh, what we're gonna do is come over to the right. We're going to click edit. And then we're gonna scroll up until we find this spot that says persistent profile path. And we're going to fill in some information there. It's just, it's a path where you want your profiles to be stored. Now, something to keep in mind with this is that if you plan on saving large files, you will wanna make sure that your hard drive can support it. Wherever you put your persistent path, make sure that there is plenty of space on that drive. Uh, that's gonna be super important to make sure that you don't overload that hard drive, fill it up, and then make it so that you can't access your stuff. So wherever you store this, Again, make sure that there's plenty of hard drive space there, especially if you're gonna have multiple users on your setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here to where it says persistent profile path. And I'm just going to put in home slash persistence slash profiles slash Ubuntu underscore focal. And then this curly brace username curly brace, that is a, that's basically a variable so that whoever is logging in, um, they will each have their own persistent path for this instance. And basically what that means is if you've got, you know, say three users on here that are all gonna log in to, to uh, Ubuntu focal, each one will have their own separate profile. So if you do something to yours, it won't affect anyone else. You could, I guess, if you wanted to, you know, delete the curly braces and everything would get stored there. 
However, from a practicality and usability standpoint, not a good idea. So we're gonna put those curly braces back in there to make sure that it represents a variable that will automatically populate the username of the person logging in and using this particular workspace. So once we've got this, uh, we can scroll down and click submit. Just like so, just that easily. Now we can go back to our workspaces. Again, we're gonna select uh, Ubuntu Focal. And here, now we've got this new option where it says persistent profile. By default, it is enabled. However, uh, you can enable it, disable it, or reset it if you wanted to do that. Um, you know, so basically, if you if you leave this on enabled, every time you log in, you'll log into the same workspace with all of your files and folders and all of that stuff ready to go for you. If you switch it to disabled, it's just gonna spin up a, a temporary instance so that, you know, even if you've got a persistent storage, you can go to disabled persistent storage, do your thing, delete it, and then it's like it never happened. And then with this uh, reset, you should be able to then to reset your persistent storage uh, back to basically day one with none of your files available to it. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this as enabled. Uh, current tab is fine. I'm gonna give this a second. Again, we're gonna go ahead and close this. Uh, we're gonna go back, we're gonna open uh, Firefox again. We're gonna type in uh, cat uh, pictures again. And then um, let's let's pick a different one. Let's let's pick this guy. Uh, we're going to uh, save the image as. Again, we're going to go to pictures because again, I just figured that's the best place to store that. And there we go. Let's let's for the sake of it, uh, let's grab this guy as well. We're going to right click, uh, save image as. Again, same location. I actually appreciate it that it remembered. I wanted that to be in pictures, but I'm going to click save, just like so. Now I'm going to close Firefox. I'm gonna go to downloads. I'm gonna go over here to Chasm user and pictures. And right there are the two cat pictures we just downloaded. So next I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close that. And then I'm going to uh, come over here and delete the session entirely. And then we're gonna go ahead and click this again. We're going to leave persistent profile enabled and click launch session. We'll give it just a second to load up here. Again, we'll close that. We'll open this up. I know I could create a, a shortcut for pictures, but I'm lazy. So again, we're gonna go to pictures and hey, look, our cat pictures are still there showing that this actually does work the way we want it to. Now, what I wanna do is actually close this. Like, so we're gonna delete the session entirely just like we did before. Um, we're gonna open this up again, but what we wanna do is actually switch this to disabled current tab, perfectly fine. And then come over to here, go to downloads. Chasm user, pictures, and there's nothing there, okay? So that means that we're not using that persistent profile that we were using a moment ago. This is a completely separate instance. So let's let's close this. Uh, let's come over to here, delete our session, delete our session. Uh, go to Ubuntu Focal Desktop. We're going to do enabled for a persistent profile again. Launch our session. Minimize. Uh, uploads, whatever, doesn't matter. Pictures, hey look, our cats are back. So that just kind of shows how um, the persistent versus non-persistent storage works with these different workspaces. You you can set up a persistent profile, but you don't always have to use it. You can toggle back and forth depending on what your goal is for that particular session. Okay, so the next thing we wanna take a look at is changing the default session time and by default it's set to an hour and that may not always be appropriate that may not always be reasonable so if we if we go ahead and just minimize this or come over here we're going to click on workspaces and right here we can see that it expires in 59 minutes so about an hour so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to delete this session it doesn't matter that we were on our persistent storage session so it doesn't matter what we do there uh, what we'll do next is come over to the admin area we're going to go back to workspaces over here on the left hand side and then we're going to scroll down uh, to, to, to do this one right here, I believe. Let me make sure uh, that's the one. And then we're going to do edit. And then we're going to come right here where it says session time limit in seconds. Um, I have mixed feelings on seconds there um, because let's say you wanted to make it, I don't know, let's say you wanted to make your session last a year. I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, we're just gonna put in, uh, you know, uh, 3,153,000, no, 31,536,000 seconds there, that's a lot, it doesn't matter ultimately, but we're gonna go ahead and click submit right there. Um, and then we'll come back to our workspaces. We're gonna go ahead and just open this back up and we'll click enabled is all fine, this is all good. We'll click launch session. 
And here now we get this banner across the bottom. I have mixed feelings on that. Uh, that should actually have a three in front of it. That kind of shows how unrealistic setting this for a year is. But if we come over and uh, go to workspaces again, uh, right here we can see that we've got uh, 364 days, 23 hours. So you can change your your session time limits on a workspace by workspace basis. You know, maybe you want you know eight hours, 12 hours, whatever. I think those are much more realistic. Um, but but you can absolutely go in on each of your different um, on your each of your different workspaces and configure how long you'd like the default session time limit to be. So that's how easy it is to change the default time limit on any of your different workspaces. Of course, you can go in and configure uh, probably much shorter sessions than I demonstrated here at a year, but uh, you can go through each of your different workspaces and configure that time limit uh, in seconds on, on each of your workspaces independently of each other. Uh, we, we talked about uh, persistent storage on a workspace by workspace basis. Um, I, think, I think I only showed one instance there where I had Ubuntu underscore focal in that path. You would wanna change that to represent in each of the different workspaces that you're setting up a persistent storage path for. Uh, I apologize for not showing that, but that you would wanna change that Ubuntu underscore focal um, and switch that out with the actual uh, workspace name uh, when you set up the persistent storage for each of your different workspaces. We also talked about rolling images, which gives us the opportunity to make sure that we've got the most current updates uh, to that container whenever we deploy it. So hopefully you found this video helpful, informative, whatever uh, words you wanna use there. And if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up that really does help quite a bit. And of course, if you've got questions or comments or anything like that, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. But I think with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.